Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Hubert Vallet from Canadian Metals. How are you? Very good, Tracy. Thank you. I'm so delighted to meet you because, for starters, I'd like to congratulate you. You've just joined the executive team of Canadian Metals and they've had quite a coup in bringing you in. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? On my background, I'm uh, basically I'm an electrical engineer. I work uh, more than 30 years in the iron ore and uh, most recently from 2005 uh, I was joining the uh, the first very first uh, group of consolidated Thompson and succeed to build Bloom Lake mine site and uh, we sold to Cliff for five billion dollars in 2011. So there you go. You know, I always tell our audience to watch the jockeys. So with Canadian Metals, you've been putting out a number of news releases and you're aggressively moving forward to uh, completing your PEA. Can you give us an update on this? Okay, so the PEA, uh, we intend to deliver a PEA by the end of this year. So my understanding is that your PEA will be done later this year? Yeah. And some of your members of your team have been telling me you're going to jump straight to your bankable feasibility study after the PEA is complete. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. We could do that because of the technology. The technology is a well-proven technology and the risk is very low. That's why we could do that. And I want to get right into that. Because of your technology, what do you mean by that? But the technology to use to produce ferrous silicone is used for more than 100 years. So we don't have to piloting and to testing the, the process. So that's why uh, we could jump directly to the bank and move. So for anyone listening right now, I'm sure your next question is, what is ferrosilicon? This is uh, very exciting to us, so can you uh, give me a bit of an overview? Ferrosilicon is used uh, mainly uh, to the steel production in the blast furnace. They need the, that product to deoxidize the, uh, the iron and to produce a high quality steel. They also use the ferrosilicon in the production of the magnesium and the stainless steel. At a portion, it's it's like a, a, a little a little portion compared to the uh, to the main. This mean uh, for the iron is when you use about three to four kilo per ton, the requirement of the ferrosilicon. And it's my understanding that you have one of the best deposits of high grade ferrosilicon and quartz in the world. Is that correct? Yeah, that's a very very good question. The first thing I did when uh, I was told by uh, a co contact by Canadian uh, uh, Metal. Uh, I had one of my good friends stayed in Matan, which where is the deposit, and I call, call him and he confirmed to me this deposit is a, a world class, a huge deposit, because this is the most important thing, is the deposit is there and the quality is there, and I could confirm to you independently, I, I verify it, I did my due diligence, and this is there. So, in addition to this, you have a very tight timeline can you talk to me a little bit about the timeline? I mean, they've just brought you in in the last couple of months and you've got a track record of getting things done. What are your plans? Our plan is to deliver a PE by the end of the year, deliver a, a bankable feasibility study, depending on the, on the financing, but we are quite confident to get the money, and uh, deliver this bankable feasibility by the third quarter of the next year, 2016, in parallel running the environmental permitting process, which is the longest uh, period we need to wait. The environmental process, the environmental permitting process will take well, between 18 to 24 months. And we intend to, to start this process shortly in the next month. I've had the benefit of seeing your infrastructure, which is just amazing, and how fast you're going to actually be able to do this. And I, it looks to me like your CapEx and OpEx is quite competitive. Can you tell us about what this is going to cost to get you to production? At this stage, that would be confirmed by the PE, but we expect to have uh, around 175 million CapEx requirement. And actually, the sales price of the ferrosilicon is an average about $2,000. Our production costs anticipated, but that again, that would be confirmed by the PE, that would be in the range of $800 to $900 per ton. I've had the benefit of taking a look at uh, many of your marketing materials, and it looks to me like you have a very competitive infrastructure towards securing production in addition to your technology. Can you give us a little bit more of an overview on this? Uh, on the capital, uh, capital money requirement, uh, we estimate at this moment, but this number would be confirmed by the PNA, but we estimate that it would be around $175 million requirement, Canadian dollars. Uh, on the selling price, actual, actually the ferro silicon is, is selling on average of about $2,000 uh, per ton. And that's, that's the, the most we can say at the moment. 
And of course, the Chinese control 70% of the world's ferrosilicon supply. Can you give us a little bit of an overview about the rising demand, for instance? I mean, obviously, if you need it in steel, there's going to be a lot of demand for ferrosilicon. So actually, the world production of ferrosilicon is around 8 million tons per year. We intend to produce 50 million tons. And all the North American, North America import uh, uh, ferrosilicon from, from China and other countries. So we are quite confident to be able to sell that 50 million, 50,000 tons, which is a very small amount of, of production, uh, to the North American uh, needs. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Daisy.